Good afternoon again. Um, my name is Christopher Diorio, and uh, we're here for another edition of Chris Chat. Um, I want to specifically discuss today uh, issues related to uh, the potential for upcoming protests. Um, it's a topic that I've gotten into previously uh, here uh, in this forum, but I want to get back into it again today. Um, given that there has been a, a large number of individuals who are talking about uh, engaging in protests uh, post-inauguration, there are a number of uh, women's marches and marches he not just here in Boston, um, but uh, in Washington, D.C., planned for tomorrow, in New York, many major cities. Uh, and it's important for you that you know what your rights are uh, in terms of protests and things of that nature. Um, as, as I've stated here before, um, I am an attorney in Massachusetts. Uh, I am also a civil rights advocate and educator and, uh, and a professor of constitutional law. Um, so this is an area in which uh, I am uh, deeply familiar um, and hopefully I can uh, get this uh, information out to you and hopefully it's you know, worthwhile and useful for you. Um, so first, let me talk about, and I posted a video on this previously, um, so I want to make sure that, you know, that folks out there are aware uh, of what we talked about in, in previous uh, videos regarding uh, your rights to protest, what your rights are constitutionally, um, what your rights are in terms of uh, police interaction, which is very important, and that's really the, the, the fear that a lot of people are going to have tomorrow. Um, what your rights are. First, um, a rehash of, of where these rights come from. Uh, right there in the First Amendment, uh, it says at the very end that people have the right to peaceably assemble uh, and to petition the government for redress of grievances. And as I've stated before, and I'll repeat again, that's the key language. The key language is your right to peaceably assemble. When you stop being peaceful, you then give law enforcement the right to intervene and it becomes a criminal aspect and not a First Amendment situation. So that's the dividing line that you have to worry about. Have I trodden upon an area where the protest is no longer peaceably assembling and gone into some aspect of violence. And this is not just for those of you who are out there protesting tomorrow. This also deals with those individuals who would, and they are going to be out there, there will be counter protesters. Um, and they are bound by the same rules that you will be. So you need to know what they can and cannot do as well as what you can and cannot do. Um, so the trick here is when you are no longer peaceful, that's when the trouble begins. Um, do not, under any circumstances, give law enforcement an excuse to detain you or restrain you uh, in any fashion. Um, the key here, when you're looking at your right to peaceably assemble uh, in protest, is that nobody can restrict your First Amendment right to the content of what you're protesting. They cannot restrict your ability to speak. They cannot res restrict what you are saying at any point. That's not to say that all speech is permitted. There are certain things that you cannot do. You cannot threaten people. You cannot advocate violence. The case there, uh, Brandenburg versus Ohio, is, is the, the standard right now. If you are speaking in a fashion that is designed or has the effect of, and this is the language that they use now, inciting an imminent lawless action, i.e. violence or something of that nature, um, then you run the risk of having your speech no longer being protected, and now you don't get the First Amendment protections that you're entitled to. Um, so they cannot restrict what you say, barring certain things that are not protected. Um, they can restrict you in terms of obscenity. Uh, obscenity is not, uh, you know, but again, you, it's an odd line that you, that you run across. Um, the government and law enforcement and local you know, organizations can restrict not what you say, but the manner in which you say it. These are called time, place, and manner restrictions. Um, and they can address uh, where you go, how long you're allowed to be out there. Um, 
but they cannot restrict you based on the content of your speech ever. Um, where are you allowed to go? You are allowed to go anywhere that is what is deemed to be a traditional public forum. Um, you're allowed to, and this, the marches tomorrow will be on streets. Um, you want, if you're on a public forum, streets, sidewalks, uh, public parks, uh, areas where people would normally gather or congregate to engage in peaceable protest. Um, anywhere where people are allowed to congregate, in essence, streets, street, you know, sidewalks, etc. Um, the, the, the fora in front of government buildings is also considered a traditional public forum where people can come in and protest. Um, so you're allowed to go anywhere where there's a public forum. Um, the trick there, and this will come in play, potentially into play tomorrow, based on the route that you take when you protest. If you are in front of or on private property, when you're doing this, then the private property owner, it's their rules that control. And they can restrict what you say and they can restrict how and where you say it. And if you violate their rules, then law enforcement can come in, you become a trespasser and you're no longer protected in essence. Um, so be careful when you are out there that you are not, uh, on private property, that you are doing something in a public forum or in a public area. Um, you have the right to do this on sidewalks, you have the right to do this on streets, etc. cetera. Um, but once you change and you become a private protester, then the rules change. Um, local law enforcement has certain powers to limit where you go. Um, if you are out there on the street, you're permitted. This is the, the marches tomorrow, for the most part, will be what we term a moving protest um, or a moving parade. It's, it's a, a, a protest or a march that, that moves, as most marches would do. Um, but when you do so, you have to stay on the designated path of the march. If you stray from the designated path, if you, you know, because this is part of your time, place, and manner restriction, if you stray from the path, then the police have the right to move you back. Um, more to the point though, if you are engaged in walking on sidewalks or on streets and you are impeding traffic without permission of law enforcement, if there are police out there stopping cars, etc., cetera, then, then you know, that's one thing. But if you are on a sidewalk and you are impeding traffic into private domiciles, private businesses, commercial enterprises, etc. If you are blocking doorways, if you are blocking the access of pedestrians to get up and down the street, um, at that point, you can be restricted by police um, in terms of where you, you'll be diverted. Uh, and at that point, you run into it no longer being part of this general public forum. Um, you are permitted to... Um, stop for a while, but it, in essence, it has to move. Um, is there a permit required for this? It, these big protests, I'm sure, hopefully, have uh, engaged in the permitting process. And again, uh, permits aren't normally required unless there's a really high volume of people, because, or if you're going to be in a place or congregating in a place where there is sound amplification or something of that nature. At that point, the law enforcement and local government has the right to restrict your volume and, and restrict your your, uh, your populace as far as that's concerned. But otherwise, they can't really do anything to you as far as the permits are concerned. Um, can you distribute or give away uh, pamphlets or information? Yes. Um, you are permitted to you know hand out information. You're permitted to stop people on the sidewalk if you wish to to solicit them. You're allowed to set up tables in public places to give out pins or buttons or things of that nature, hats, scarves, you know, whatever it is. But if you impede their progress at that point, you have gone astray of what is protected conduct and move more into the area of uh, being a nuisance or trespassing or some other, you know, uh, thing that gives law enforcement an excuse. And that is going to be the overarching Thing that I want you to get from this. Don't give law enforcement an excuse to intervene. When you do, at that point, um, 
it you, you've got a clash between your First Amendment rights and the rights of law enforcement to maintain order. Um, and if you cross into a criminally non-protected area, then you, you've given them an excuse to do something. And I want to touch on that um, next. Uh, first of all, if there are questions, if people have questions that you want to ask, um, I will try to answer them as best I can. Um, so write them up or, you know, if you if a question comes to you after the fact and you send me a message or, or you know, post on this, uh, I will get to your, your question as well. But if you have questions during the, uh, during the chat, by all means. Um, public sidewalks. A lot of this is going to take place on streets and the marching through the streets, but on public sidewalks. Do you have a right to hold signs and picket and protest on public sidewalks? Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and you don't have to have a permit to do it. But as with the, the march itself, picketing, large signs, etc., must be done in an orderly, non-disruptive fashion so that pedestrians can pass by and that entrances to buildings are not blocked. You cannot... Uh, impede the normal progress of things. It's one thing we're out on a street and police are, you know, blocking off certain zones so that you can march in peace. But if you stray over into private property areas, at that point, uh, you're no longer as protected as you were and law enforcement can divert you. Um, so yes, you can pick it on sidewalks, but if you do, you have to make sure that you're not parked out in front of um, doorways access to residences, access to business. You have to let pedestrians pass by that don't want to participate in your protest. You have to let them go. Um, so that's the normal path that you have to take as far as you know public sidewalks. Now, during a protest, what happens if you are, if you have a police interaction? What happens if you have a police encounter? Um, the first thing that I will say to you is don't start flailing around and screaming, you know, uh, I'm help, help, I'm being oppressed. Um, you want to, at that point, stay calm. I know it's going to be hard. Stay calm. Be polite. Do not run away because flight then allows them to put their hands on you potentially and they can trump something up, that, <laughs> trump something up, um, that allows them to interact with you at a more hands-on detention fashion don't argue with them and i know this is counter to a lot of your 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 understanding but and frankly from me as well don't argue don't resist don't obstruct them from doing their job even if you are innocent of anything or even if you believe that the police are violating your rights because you know don't give them an excuse don't give them an excuse um in massachusetts in terms of your police interaction, you must give your name. If you are asked to identify yourself, you must give your name. Um, if they ask you for identification, in a, if you are in a car, you have to give it to them. Otherwise, no. Um, you're not required to give any paperwork. This is not Nazi Germany yet, where you have to provide papers to prove who you are. Um, but you have to give them identifying information, pedigree information. That's all you have to do. Um, if you are involved with a police interaction, keep your hands where the police can see them. Again, don't give them an excuse. Um, point out politely that you, know, you aren't disrupting anybody else's activity, um, that the First Amendment protects what you're doing. You know, continue to remind them of that. Don't say my taxes pay your salary because God knows that they really love that. Um, during this interaction, if you feel that you are being detained against your will for any extended period of time, here's the question you need to ask, and ask it frequently if need be. Am I free to leave? Am I free to leave? If the officer says yes, calmly, silently, walk away. If the officer tells you you're not free to leave, now you have the right to ask why. Again, if they tell you that you're not free to leave or that you're under arrest, God forbid, um, do not resist. Passive. Even if you believe the arrest is unfair, do not resist. Um, if you are taken into custody, if they you know, place hands on you because you are not free to leave, or if they detain you by their words or by their physical presence and you are no longer free to leave, you have the right to ask why. And keep asking why. 
Don't just be quiet and be a good little soldier at that point. You have rights. A, ask why you're being detained. B, say that you are not speaking. You, you are exercising your rights to remain silent immediately. They don't have to read your rights just immediately. As soon as they tell you you're under arrest or that you're not free to leave, you tell them that you wish to remain silent and you ask for an attorney immediately. If you do not have an attorney's number, what I would caution you to do is to take down the number of the local ACLU uh, and I will post that in a comment to this video later on. Um, what you also need to do um, is make that phone call and if you're calling an attorney, you they're not allowed to listen. The police are not allowed to listen to that phone call um, because it's attorney-client privileged. So if you are under arrest, you must continue to ask what it is that you've done and then remain silent. I want an attorney. Do that. I will put my number up. My number should be up there. I'll put my number there. I'll, I'll be available Saturday. Um, you know, it's, I'm not shilling for business. By all means, I don't want any of you to friggin' call me. Don't. Um, because that means that you're doing it right and you're doing it safe and nothing bad has happened. But if something does happen, please feel free to call. Um, if you are detained, if you are arrested, can the police search you? Um, you do not ever under any circumstances, including being detained at a protest, you do not ever have to consent to a search of yourself or your belongings. They can only pat down your clothing if they suspect you are carrying a weapon. Um, and if they arrest you, then they can do a more involved search. Do, again, do not physically resist. Don't give them excuses to go further, but you have the right to refuse consent to any search. And if you do explicitly, you know, consent, if you let them do it, then what they find can be used against you. You, you, you lose a good portion of your rights to um, go after them later on uh, for what they're saying and what they're doing and what they find. Um, if, if your rights are violated, if the police interact with you and they violate your rights to free speech, if they violate your rights as a peaceful protester, um, you may have an instinct at that point to want to fight back immediately. Don't. The street is not the place to challenge police misconduct. It's just not. Do not physically resist officers. Don't, I'm going to file a civilian, don't threaten to file complaints. But, as soon as you are able to, and you should do this anyway, have a, a pen, have multiple pens with you. Have your, your phone set or an iPad or whatever it is, whatever device you need to write something and hold it down and to keep it, have it with you. Multiple platforms. Write down everything you remember. Write down uh, badge numbers, write down car numbers for patrol vehicles if you see them nearby um, because they have to dictate where they are. And if, if there's a question, if you know that this vehicle was there at a certain time, that's all checked in. Um, so you can say that. Say what agency they're from because there may in fact be multiple agencies. It, it, you know, Here in Boston, it might be the Boston police. It might be the state police. It might be the MDC. It could be any number of things. If you're in DC, there's, mo there's metro police. There's state, there's federal police that might be there. <coughs> Make sure you write down all information that you have and get any, keep, be detailed. Keep all possible details with you. Um, if there are other people around you, if you're traveling in a group, or if you're not traveling in a group and you, you have other people around, get contact information for anybody who witnessed what went on. Um, again, God forbid, you get hurt. If there's an injury, if you're knocked down, taken down, chronicle the injury. Take pictures of the injuries after you seek medical attention, by the way. Um, but take pictures of the injuries. Make sure that that's chronicled. Um, at that point, when you have all of that information together, then you file complaints with the local law enforcement or whomever the agency is that, that violated your rights. Um, go to their internal affairs division. Go to IAD. File a civilian complaint. Do something. Um, most of these places will allow you to file a complaint anonymously. Um, but you may not want to. If you wish, contact an attorney, contact the ACLU. Trust me, they're chomping at the bit for these things. They want to help, so please let them. Um, one question I get a lot. Um, 
during this, do you have a right to photograph or videotape things during a protest? Um, if someone says they don't want their picture taken, don't do it. Just don't be that person. Um, but in terms of your general rights, yes. If you are law, if you're lawfully present in a public space, you have the right to photograph anything that's in plain view. Anything. Um, this includes buildings. This includes transportation facilities. This includes the police. You can take pictures of police. When you're on private property, different story. Like before. Public property, you're free to do whatever. Private property, they set the rules. Um, so they can set rules about your videography or your photography, etc. Um, the police are not permitted to confiscate or demand to see the pictures or the video that you have taken. If it's on your phone, it belongs to you. It is your property under the 4th and 14th Amendment. They need a warrant to look at your phone. And recent Supreme Court cases have, have followed that up. They need a warrant to see what is on your phone. They also cannot delete your pictures. Even if you show, if you're stupid and you show them to, they can't delete your photo. They can't delete your videos under any circumstances. What they can do is order you to cease activities that are truly interfering with legitimate law enforcement operations. If you are impeding their ability to engage in uh, law enforcement uh, technique, they you want to make sure that you've done that. All right, uh, again. It all comes back to this one central thing. Don't give law enforcement an excuse to screw this up for you and for everybody else. Um, do This is going to happen tomorrow. It is. Um, I've already gotten two notices uh, from inside people, one from the ACLU uh, and one from the state police because I, I follow along with their, with their communiques, etc., um, there will, in fact, be, they're planning for it, uh, there will be violent protesters tomorrow. Um, there will, well, there'll be violent counter-protesters tomorrow. They're going to be out. Um, first, be safe. Second, um, what are their rights? And as I said in the previous video, their rights are the same as yours. They, you know, to... to to paraphrase a line from from you know the American president, they they have the right to stand on one street corner and shout down everything that you have the right to stand on the opposite corner to speak about, um, but they must abide by the same rules that you do. Um, counter demonstrators should not be allowed to physically disrupt the event that they're protesting, but they have the right to be there. They have the right to be present, and they have the right to voice their displeasure with you. They can say what they wish. Um, they can say horrible, vulgar things, and then if the police want to interact with them and stop the vulgarity, they can do that. Uh, but once it steps, you know, what the police can do in that circumstance, um, they're not going to shut them up, no different than they should be shutting you up. Um, but they are permitted to keep antagonistic groups, groups that are going to um, be at loggerheads and, and definitely, you know, potentially bordering on violence, hopefully not. They're allowed to keep antagonistic groups separated, but they still have to allow them to be in the general vicinity of each other. They can't force them to go 100 yards away from you. Um, so they have their rights just like you do. But again, if you have a phone, if you have a camera, chronicle all this information. Take pictures of them. Get names. By all means, scare the crap out of them. Um, Put it put it on live. Get it on Facebook live. Get it on YouTube live. Do whatever you have to do. Put it out there because once it's out there, then you know you hopefully you don't lose it. Um, does it matter if there are other things going on at the same time? Um, again, the the government cannot discriminate against activities because of the content of the message, even if the content of the message is controversial. They can't jump in, jump in. They can't pick and choose, for want of a better term. Um, so if there are other events that are scheduled at the same time, and there shouldn't be, um, if there are other events, they can't pick yours and tell, you know, you have to go one place and they select these folks and they're allowed to stay. Um, in terms of permitting, in terms of access, in terms of all of those things. Um, so again, the, 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 central message, the thread that runs through all of this for all of you is 
Do not give law enforcement an excuse to engage in something that will otherwise tear apart what should be a peaceful protest. Um, get out there. Uh, be safe. Be smart. But be heard. Let your voice be heard. It's when you put your head in the sand, it's when you ignore all of this, um, that free speech loses. You know, this is frankly what they want. They, they want you to be quiet. They want you to be cowed. They want you to fall back into the dark spaces. Don't do that. Um, and it begins with you and it begins tomorrow. It begins with each of us. Um, it begins with each of us saying what we want our country to be like and what we don't. Um, but do not give law enforcement an excuse, but make yourself heard. Um, that's all I have for today. Um, I will keep the line open right now for the next few minutes. If people have questions uh, about what we talked about, or if you have questions about things that you've read there, I know there are a bunch of uh, notices going around on Facebook about things to do, uh, writing things on your arm, um, uh, a little extreme, but not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Um, but if you do it with a Sharpie, just know that that's indelible ink and that's not coming off for quite a while. So if you want to have that on your inner forearm, by all means. Um, the other, one of the other things that I heard a question asked about recently was, um, using the fingerprint ID for your, for your iPhone, um, instead of, uh, the, you know, a swipe. If you do have a phone, if you're still like, you know, lesser generation phones, or I don't know if you've set up your own phone to have, uh, where you're not having a security feature in order to get your phone open, set it, set it, set some sort of ID feature on the phone. Um, what I will say, and I'm going to sound like, you know, tinfoil hat, paranoid guy, don't use the thumbprint. Don't. Um, because frankly, your thumb can be held to the pad involuntarily. If they really want to open it, all they have to do is put your thumb on the thing and boom, it opens up and now they can go looking. But if you use a six digit number like most, um, like most iPhones of the generation six and beyond have, um, use that code. Don't make it obvious, uh, obviously, and make sure that any access to your information is restricted. Um, Okay, so I don't see any questions coming in, so I will cut it short. Um, I will post the video for, for public use. If you do have questions after watching the video, um, if you share it, if it's, you know, people come in, by all means, ask questions. Um, what I would suggest also is that, you know, you take down uh, certain telephone numbers uh, to make sure that you have you know, access. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to write, I write down the telephone numbers for you uh, for the local ACLU. Uh, I will also put my telephone number down for my office um, and for direct access to me. Um, so if you need that, by all means, please use it. Uh, but otherwise, as I said, be safe out there tomorrow. Be safe out there anytime. Um, these are strange times now. Um, so don't be part of the strange. Be part of the solution. Thank you very much, and I'll post this uh, to go live now.